Are you struggling when you're needle felting face details? Are you finding it hard to make eyes and mouths really good? Well, I'm going to share five more tips on how to needle felt cartoon style eyes, mouths, eyebrows, and other fine details. And at the end, I'll tell you the results of an experiment I did to see if using different needles makes needle felting faces easier. You haven't got a buddy. Eh, neither have you. Okay, anyway, let's get started. So my first tip is attaching around the edge first. This is especially useful when you're applying an eye, pupil or nose. If you've watched my previous video on felting faces, I talk about marking out where your eyes should go before applying the wool, as I have done here. But in order to make sure the wool you apply stays within this boundary that you've marked out, my first tip is to start by stabbing and attaching the wool at the top of the eye, then stab the very bottom point, then stab around the right hand side and then the left, making sure you stay within the border. Then slowly work your way around the outline or border of where you want the eye to be. As you can see here, I've not felted the centre of the eye at all. It's still sticking up. I've just made sure that I've got the shape as I want it first. Then I can go ahead and stab down the centre area and make sure it's well felted onto the head. <coughs> Tip 2. Angling your needle. If you spot that your eye isn't looking quite the right shape or sticks out a bit, you can adjust the shape by angling your needle at about 45 degrees to the surface and angle it in the direction you want the wool to go. So if I want to make the eye a bit smaller and the edges to come in a bit, have your needle angled inwards towards the centre of the eye and stab around the edge of the black. Or if you want to move the edge outwards to make the eye bigger, point the angle of your needle away from the centre, stabbing at the edge of the black outwards in the direction you want the wool to move. In that way you can guide the wool wherever you want to make the perfect shape. So that you don't have to try to remember all these tips, I've created a PDF that lists all the tips from this video and the five tips from the previous video so that you can refer to them while you're needle felting. It includes pictures and clear guidance to help you make lovely neat faces. I'll put a link in the description below. <coughs> Tip 3. Needle felting mouths and eyebrows and other thin lines. I've found in lots of my projects you often need to be able to needle felt a thin line, perhaps for a mouth or an eyebrow or even foot details on a rabbit. So one of my tips for getting a lovely thin line is hold a thin piece of twisted wool whilst felting it in place. So take a very small amount of roving or tops wool and twist it to see how thick this line will be. If it's too thick, pull some of the wool apart and use the section of this wool that looks like it's going to be about the right width. And if you've watched my previous tips video on felting faces, you will have already marked where you want the mouth to be, just with your needle. Then hold this section of twisted wool over the starting point of your mouth and stab it to attach it at that mark point. I'll explain which needles will make it easier later in the video, so stick around for that. But first, keep moving the wool so that it's positioned over where you've previously marked the mouth and then stab the black wool down over these marks. Take your time with this. This will give you a rough line. And once you've trimmed off the ends, you can neaten up the shape of the line by using the previous technique of angling your needle to adjust the shape if necessary, moving the mouth up or down, and then stab it down some more just to make sure it's attached. If you're finding this helpful, it would really make my day if you'd click the like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And there you have a lovely, neat, thin line. <coughs> Tip four. Don't be afraid to go wrong. Let me know in the comments if you can relate to this. But I have to constantly remind myself not to be afraid to make mistakes when needle felting, whether it's felting something in the wrong place or making it the wrong size. And I especially find that I get paralysed with fear of making a mess of my whole item by felting the face all wrong. But really, there's nothing to be afraid of. Because like drawing with a pencil, your little bear's mouth can be erased with a sewing needle and recovered with a bit of wool. And as if by magic, you have a blank canvas again to have another ago. So this is a reminder to all of us that it's okay to make mistakes. They might even result in something magical and creative. If you want further details on how to do this, I'll put a link to my other video on how to correct mistakes in the description below. <coughs> Tip 5. Using the right needles for the job. The more observant of you may have noticed that throughout this video I've been needle felting three bears, but there's no Goldilocks I'm afraid. I like my porridge nice and hot please. No, I don't. Overnight oats from the fridge for me. Oh, heck, we've started them off now. Anyway, as I was saying, there's no Goldilocks or porridge for that matter, but I do have three bear heads that have been felted from the same core wool. Then I coated all three with the same merino roving and stabbed them to the same firmness. That's to make sure it's a fair test, as having a solid firm head will make applying the face details easier. But what are we testing? Well, I thought I'd needle felt each bear's face with a different needle to see whether the type of needle you use can make it easier or even get better results. So on the first bear head, I'm 
I'm using my old faithful 40 gauge triangular needle, which has quite a few barbs on it, but is nice and fine. On the second bare head, I'm using another triangular needle, but this time a 42 gauge, which is even finer than the 40 gauge, and only has three barbs, which are spread out along all the edges of the needle. And on the third bare, I'm using a 46 gauge crown, an extremely fine needle, which also has only three barbs, but they're all in the same place on each edge of the needle near the tip. When I was attaching the noses and the eyes, to be honest, there wasn't much in it. I liked using all three needles, with the 42 gauge triangular and the 46 gauge crown probably in joint first place. However, when it came to felting the thin lines for the mouth and the eyebrows, differences between the needles started to show. I found that using the 40 gauge triangular needle tended to leave larger holes as its diameter is wider than the other two needles. So then you think, oh well, 46 crown must be the best because it's the finest of the three. Well, I thought that too, but that's where it gets interesting. When I started to use the 46 crown, I found that because it's only got a few barbs in the same place at the end of the needle, it took several stabs to get the black wool to attach. This meant that I was felting over and over in the same place. And looking closely at the eyebrows of the 46 crown teddy head, you can see it's showing more holes than the eyebrows felted with the 42 gauge triangular needle. I think this is because the 42 triangular has barbs spread out along the needle. So it's catching the wool and felting it a little bit quicker. And therefore, I'm stabbing less. And therefore, there's less holes. And it felt so much easier to use. A lot easier than the 46 crown. So that's why I recommend using a 42 gauge triangular needle for applying face details or the finest triangular needle you have. But there's just one more thing that will really help you to take your needle felt into the next level, getting a smooth finish. And in this video, I'll show you how using a 42 gauge triangular needle compares against other methods of getting a smooth finish on your project. Hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching.